As the title said, this will be an update, sort of, uh, with respect to what I've presented two years ago, uh, concerning the calculations that uh, have already been mentioned by Geoffroy and Matteo uh, for the phonons uh, uh, in the high throughput uh, regime. Uh, so, I would at least uh, remind them what was uh, uh, our target, uh, even if it was mentioned more or less. So, th the idea was that uh, uh, we wanted to make uh, Abinit uh, uh, available for the people that wanted to make uh, high throughput calculations. And uh, our aim to begin with was to uh, actually have the phone band structure that has been shown uh, on the materials project database. Uh, so, two years ago, more or less, uh, we already had uh, most of the infrastructure uh, ready with the workflows implemented. Uh, and Calculations were running, uh, we still had uh, some preliminary results. Uh, and my, my uh, aim for today is to show uh, the results that we have actually uh, obtained, uh, mention few problems that emerged, uh, and what will be the next steps, uh, hopefully. Uh, so, for the high throughput part, I think Matteo already made this quite clear. I will maybe stress it once more. Uh, uh, that uh, ABIPI is not strictly for high throughput. Uh, uh, ABIFLOWS, which is another package, is. Uh, but, and this relies and depends on all these other uh, Python packages. Uh, and if you are willing to use it, uh, you can find it on GitHub along with the other uh, dependencies. Uh, this was uh, the workflow also that I showed more or less two years ago. Uh, to run the following calculations. Uh, we've tried to uh, extend this a little bit uh, by inc including the uh, other perturbations that are available uh, for uh, the FPT, uh, even if those are not running at the materials project. And uh, uh, I'd like to uh, highlight also the fact that, uh, as Matteo mentioned, uh, each of these calculations uh, are running on, uh, is running on a, a different job. So it's sort of a different perspective with respect uh, to what we have seen in yesterday's talks uh, in which uh, uh, they were gathered in a single abinit run. Uh, this was our uh, choice uh, and uh, our approach. Um, and uh, uh, the mm, Let's say the first thing that we did to uh, approach the uh, running of high throughput calculation uh, was to uh, take on the problem of the uh, uh, accuracy of the results. Uh, these uh, came up before with the comparison with the uh, database from, uh, from Phonopy. Uh, and uh, we actually tried to uh, get the results as accurate as possible. And to do this, we, we made a convergence study on uh, K points and Q points grades. Uh, we basically considered uh, high converged uh, uh, grades and did all sort of uh, statistics on the errors, uh, uh, relative absolute uh, mean maximum, uh, and uh, comparing uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the quantities that we wanted to obtain, so like the phone frequencies and uh, the uh, bone effective charges. Uh, in order to find uh, some good number that uh, we were satisfied with, and we came up with uh, in, uh, the value of 1,500 points per reciprocal atom, meaning that uh, if you multiply the number of k points times the number of atoms, you should have something roughly 1,500. And this led to reasonably small uh, errors on the phonon frequencies. Uh, we found a few other hints for our calculations, like uh, running uh, uh, on uh, uh, commensable Q grids with respect to the K point grids, and uh, also considered something that it will not come as a, a surprise, but at least uh, it was uh, uh, verified uh, the fact that it's, it's definitely more convenient to run on uh, uh, grids that uh, respect the symmetries of the crystal. Uh, and you gain a lot in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, rate of convergence. Uh, and uh, 
certainly then we also made some check with the uh, experimental data, at least to verify that we were not giving, getting some uh, random results, and we compared with uh, the variational entropies uh, uh, and uh, from frequencies at gamma for the materials that, that were available in literature. And I would say that everything fits uh, with, with the experimental data or for the outliers, at least with the uh, other results in literature uh, calculated with, uh, with uh, DFT or DFPT. So we were happy with these and we started making uh, calculations. We have run for, I don't know, roughly one year, one year and a half, uh, the calculations, and we managed to get the uh, phonons that uh, Geoffroy mentioned before. Uh, this was uh, mainly uh, relatively small structures, uh, still took five million hours, that to me is not such a small amount of time. And uh, we managed to publish the data on, uh, on the scientific data paper, and uh, this comes with the DDB files that are available, so you can just download them uh, to make your post-processing or uh, the uh, uh, post already post-processed quantities like uh, thermodynamic properties and, and uh, things like this. Uh, these have already been said. Uh, the, the, the data are also available on the materials project uh, with the through the REST service and on the on the website that uh, Enrique Enrique did. So <laughs> thanks to him. Uh, and uh, okay, so this was more or less what we did for for the results. Uh, since this is a technical uh, workshop, I wanted uh, also to spend some time uh, commenting on how Abinit actually performed on, on all these tasks. Uh, and I would say that I'm pretty happy with, with what we got. Basically, uh, we have, as I've said, uh, it was roughly 1,500 uh, workflows uh, for the published uh, data, uh, for which we did uh, like full relaxation and uh, phonons with rather strict parameters uh, for the uh, convergence of the relaxation and, and uh, with functions of consistency. And out of, out of all those that have run, I have roughly 30 that did not manage to converge uh, at all. To me, this is a relatively small number, considering that all the input parameters were generated automatically. Uh, and also, out of those 30 uh, and that I've looked into, they mainly had uh, good reasons for that. Uh, uh, maybe the relaxation was taking too long and uh, uh, the, the workflow stopped, uh, or maybe some poor choice of the initial materials, uh, or even in some cases I had uh, the, the presence of uh, lantanium uh, uh, that is present in a pseudo dodger. And to be fair, this, uh, this guy is pretty hard to, to deal with in the DFPT calculations, and I did not expect why, but this was a, a constant thing that, uh, that came up. So uh, all in all, uh, this was uh, a positive uh, outcome for the Abinit uh, uh, calculations. Uh, to a bit confirm this, we also made some uh, uh, um, check uh, uh, a posteriori to actually see the, the quality of the results uh, uh, with uh, what we had, checking, uh, let's say, the breaking of the, of the sum rules that are available, and checking stuff like this, some small uh, uh, nudges close to gamma that uh, may highlight some lack of uh, convergence or uh, some problem in the interpolation. And all in all, uh, this is uh, a relatively small amount of uh, materials, again, uh, thinking that everything was uh, automated uh, to begin with. Uh, and uh, in any case, on, in the database, we, are, we highlight which materials uh, uh, do not respect uh, these uh, conditions that, uh, that we have picked. Uh, now, to come to some of the problems, uh, these are not uh, uh, paramount uh, problems, but still, uh, the first thing that I would like to mention is that uh, currently at the materials project, they, they uh, asked me to run on a cluster, which is a KNL, and uh, I don't know if you have any experience with that, and uh, to me, the, the, uh, the, the problem is that it's quite tough to optimize for that, as far as I know, and Abinit is not running 
really greatly there. Uh, I've discussed, with, uh, I've <coughs> checked with Jordan by email as far as I know. At the time, there was no optimization for the FPT. And on top of that, uh, you, if you want to optimize, you really need to tune uh, the, 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 the um, parallelization parameters. And this is not really something that uh, I would like to deal with uh, with uh, uh, automatically generated inputs. Uh, <coughs> probably not really uh, something that could be addressed, but it's, it's worth mentioning. Another thing, uh, Fabian this morning said that nobody is using iMove22. Uh, well, I do. Uh, but uh, uh, the problem is that uh, uh, it's fine, seems faster actually, but uh, uh, when, uh, when we use very small uh, tolerance, uh, values for the tolerances, sometimes it fails. Uh, when, I, when I approach the, the, the final values, it uh, it's just uh, stops or crashed. There was a small problem. Uh, and uh, well, up to now, my, my best recipe is to switch to another iron move value. Uh, but uh, yet, this was uh, something uh, that uh, was to take into account. Then another thing that uh, anyway, even if I said that uh, uh, and uh, that we want to uh, not get involved too much with the parallelization and uh, automate, then we use the auto parallel uh, for uh, well, both the relaxation and the FPT. And in some cases, in particular in the FPT, there are, I would say that there is quite some room for improvement. Uh, for example, in the FPT, as far as I've seen, it always gives the maximum number of processors that, that are available. And it's fine because it, uh, it's, in principle, uh, can, okay, can parallelize uh, uh, quite well. Uh, but still, it, it's better if uh, I parallelize just on the K points. So maybe there is some room for improvements here. And uh, well, concerning the memory, uh, as I submit automated calculation, it's, it will be, uh, I, I still need to work a bit on, on checking whether the uh, estimate uh, for the total memory that is gonna uh, be used by, by Abinit is fine, because sometimes I get some failure uh, because of that. But in all in all, uh, I would say that uh, the experience has been uh, uh, completely positive uh, with, uh, with running Abinit in high throughput. And uh, I would like to spend the last uh, minutes uh, mentioning some further developments that are maybe related with uh, uh, tools uh, available in Abipy. Uh, the first thing is that uh, uh, there are already, already more or less uh, uh, 500 uh, other uh, phone band structures that uh, should be uploaded on the materials project uh, at some point, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, and uh, we will also uh, add some uh, post-processed uh, quantities uh, like the sound velocity, uh, uh, frequency dependent uh, dielectric tensor and uh, uh, thermal displacement ellipsoid. Uh, all these uh, post-processing are already available in ABPI, so in principle you can uh, calculate it uh, yourself if you wish. Uh, another thing is that everything that I've showed are for semiconductors that are much easier to deal with. Uh, the next step will be to uh, take all the, the metals, which I expect will not go as smoothly uh, as it has for the semiconductors. And uh, well, since uh, we obviously expect to have to use some denser K-point grid, uh, not really sure about the Q-point smearing uh, and uh, dealing with cone anomalies will likely require a new convergence study uh, uh, and uh, we hope we'll manage to switch to a uh, uh, high throughput uh, uh, for non formators as well. And uh, a few other things that have been on the table is that uh, uh, the running of uh, obtaining the horizon parameters. Basically for this, the machinery is already there. Uh, the the post-processing is uh, inside uh, Abinit uh, and uh, uh, tools available in Abipy to uh, plot and, uh, and analyze the results. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of running, let's say, at least uh, uh, two more times the workflow for uh, each of the materials that uh, we, have already we have already calculated, and uh, uh, maybe some uh, posemonic approximation as well. Uh, as again, uh, there are some post-processing tools available in Abipy, uh, and for the high throughput part, let's say, 
uh, that this might come somewhat with the uh, Gomeisen parameters as well. Uh, I've uh, uh, implemented these uh, uh, post-processing in, uh, in ABIPI where you basically consider uh, the uh, several volumes uh, for your quasi-harmonic approximation, but you just do the electronic energies for uh, you do the electronic energies for several of them, but only three phonons, and extrapolate the values to other volume, expecting that uh, uh, the contribution might still be fine. Of course, this is not advisable for a uh, detailed study of the material, but if you want to just make a high throughput screening, this is something that might be uh, useful, and uh, this is just a stupid test that I made, and I'm Basically, you cannot see the difference with, uh, with the standard uh, quasi-harmonic approximation for the thermal expansion coefficient, so it's uh, at least uh, reasonably uh, fair for uh, high throughput screening. And uh, with this, I thank you for your attention.